The Your Safe Space podcast is recorded on Wurundjeri land. This podcast acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of the land. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. This episode of Your Safe Space is brought to you by Elite 11 and their Black Friday sale. Elite 11 is one of my favourite Australian sporting and activewear brands and you can shop their 80% off sale this week. Guys, welcome to Your Safe Space, the podcast. I'm your host, Adele Marie, and this podcast is here for you. It is a safe space for us to catch up each week to discuss anything and everything. And on today's show, we are talking about what to do when you are feeling stuck or lost in life. And I'm very excited to bring this episode to you. I do need to say, if you are watching, you're probably wondering, where's your sister? <laughs> Because there was some chat about her coming on the podcast. She is coming on. She will be on in either the next episode or maybe the one after that. I'm not entirely sure. She had a bit of a schedule clash today. So that's why she's not here. But today's episode is still going to be a good one. It's going to be juicy. Don't worry. And before we get into it, I want to know, how are you guys going? How has your week been? What is happening in your world? I haven't actually done, it's Thursday at the time of recording this, I haven't done the weekly gratitude post yet. I will do it today so I can read it before Sunday, but I want to know what's going on in your world. Hold space for that. Thank you also for coming back for another episode. I am always so grateful each week that you guys come and download the show or listen to the show and spend this episode with me. And thank you also for the feedback on last week's show too. It was different to my usual content and a little bit different to the usual layout of the show, but I had so much good feedback and that is something that I will definitely do again. So there'll be like a part two, part three, part four. We can keep going with that because that topic is nice and big and juicy and we can chat about it for for hours but first you guys know the drill we need to do the gratitude highlight and struggle and I love sharing mine just because it helps me check in with you guys and also some of you might be able to relate to whatever I've got going on as for my gratitude I'm going to say the weather in Melbourne this week because it has been very sunny and I really missed having that sunshine around we've had quite a bit of rain which is not unusual for Melbourne however it's probably unusual into this far into spring and I think we're nearly into summer and this week it finally felt like that. I wore shorts a few days in a row, which was nice. Today it is meant to rain, but it hasn't rained yet, but I'm just soaking up the sun as much as I can. My highlight, you guys would have seen this, was getting an Apple Watch and I'm just showing you on the screen now. I haven't, oh, that's my dad um, sending me <laughs> a love heart. Guys, I have wanted an Apple Watch for a really long time and usually I don't think I would put something external like an Apple Watch or a product like that as my highlight. However, bear with me, let me explain. I had wanted it for so long. I had a Fitbit before this and that had died and then I had gotten another Fitbit which was faulty and I just wasn't having a good run with Fitbit and I kept saying to myself, oh, I really want an Apple Watch. And then I had mentioned it to people in my life who I saw had an Apple Watch and I asked them like, do you think it's worth it? Do you get value out of it? How is your life with it? It's a bit of money to invest and I don't want to get something and then think, oh, I should have just gotten like another Fitbit or a Garmin or something else. And every single person that I spoke to said that it was amazing. And this conversation had been going on for a little while. And then last weekend I said to myself, if I edit this piece of content by this time, I set myself a goal, I can go and buy myself an Apple Watch. And I did it. Of course I did it. I did it with 30 minutes to spare. And I don't know what I'm more excited about. The fact that I finally have it or the fact that I wanted it for so long and obviously each week putting aside money for it because I tend to not want to buy big expensive things in one go and so each week I just made a conscious effort to put a little bit of money aside for it and then yeah I was finally able to go out and buy it and it was just really really nice and having it is so nice and I love it and I'm obsessed. Anyway enough about the Apple Watch let's jump into the struggle. So on top of feeling really grateful this week and still having some highlights in there I've also been feeling very overwhelmed and probably more anxious than what I would like. And I think 
I'm very self-aware and I can feel it in my body. And so I've just been making an effort to obviously manage that. I know what's causing it. I think this time of year can be highly anxiety inducing for most of us. I also have a lot of things happening a lot of the time. And yeah, I just think I'm probably becoming a little bit more sensitive in certain areas. And so what I've done to kind of tackle that is increase my therapy sessions again. So I'm back to fortnightly just during this period making sure I prioritize my journaling, my meditation, my breathing, and just really trying to give myself what I need to get through each day and just trying to take it by each day and not think too far ahead and and get freaked out. So that's kind of what's going on in my world. I'm not sure what's going on in yours yet, but hold space for it, reflect on it, and just think about it for a moment because it is important to check in with yourself. And I love that we can do that here. All right, guys, now let's jump into today's show. I think when I put up the poll this week, obviously, I knowing what I know and knowing how busy my schedule is, I wanted to kind of pre-plan a few episodes. This one came in in number two, my sister's episode was number one. She's coming, as I said before. But I wasn't surprised that this came up so much because even in the past, when I have done Ask Me Anythings on my own Instagram, this comes up quite a bit, people feeling stuck, people feeling lost in life. And so I think we need to start with what feeling stuck looks like and feels like. And I also want to unpack some of the reasons behind why this happens to us. And then we've got a break today because we've got a show sponsor. But after the break, we'll get into the listener questions where I give you guys some practical advice on how to tackle it. So back to the question box. It got flooded and I thought it would get flooded and I was glad that it got flooded because it was reassuring for me to read, but it was also good for me because then I would be able to put it into the podcast. And I also want to say thank you ever if you ever submit anything in an ask me anything or a question box on the podcast Instagram your identity will always be kept private your privacy is number one for me and I will always respect that but thank you for trusting me and I want to share what some of the areas of life you guys felt stuck in and I can even resonate with this myself so some of you are feeling quite stuck in your jobs or your career some of you are feeling stuck in relationships Some of you are feeling stuck in a place. Maybe it's like your living circumstances. Some of you are feeling stuck in friendship groups. Some of you are feeling stuck with making a decision. And some of you are stuck in certain situations that you don't want to be stuck in. And some of you are also stuck in the past, which I thought was really interesting. And as I said, it was comforting for me to read too, because I can think about so many times in my life where I have felt this feeling so many times. And I think knowing what I know now at 29 years old, the first time I felt it, it was very overwhelming. It was very scary. It was very unsure. And knowing what I know now, I can see that it has almost been like a sliding scale and like some at some points in my life I felt it worse than others and in certain situations I feel it more than others and after certain things I feel it more than other times it's just really interesting to become aware of that and obviously through this episode I want to kind of guide you guys through that now there is not actually a definition for it but I still want to try and define the feeling. And I think it may feel different for everybody. But for me, the way that I would describe it is this overwhelming feeling of like flat energy, almost just like meh. Sometimes it's even a feeling of frustration or like feeling like my hands are tied, like I can't do anything. Sometimes it's that trapped feeling, which is very similar to that hands tied feeling. And sometimes it's feeling unfulfilled for me. So just not getting any joy out of the day and not feeling very much like my cup is full, essentially. And I want to give you guys some of the other signs that may happen if you are feeling stuck. And these are just things I want to point out in case you're feeling this. And I just want to bring some awareness to it. So the first one is you aren't as excited over things as you usually are. So that, I guess, buzz for, you know, life is kind of gone. You may also be on autopilot. And this, I feel like, came up quite a bit in the question box too. You may also be reminiscing on an event or the past and kind of reliving that over and over in your head instead of actually, you know, living day to day and in the present moment. You may also feel like you've lost your motivation for things. And this came up a lot too, losing motivation at work or losing motivation for a hobby or losing motivation just to do fun things or even losing motivation within your relationship to show up as a partner or even losing motivation for your own partner. And Lastly, you may also feel unhappy and like there is nothing to look forward to. Now, the good thing is if you are feeling like this, it's not permanent. 
it's not permanent. And I believe that you can move through it and I believe that you can learn to vibe with it. And I hope that's what I can help you do today. And so on that, I think we should unpack some of the reasons why we tend to feel stuck in life. So I've shown you what it looks like and I want to get to the why because I think underneath why we're feeling stuck, some of the whys are quite similar. And I want to do this because it's important to get to the root cause of it because If we can identify where it's coming from, we can bring awareness to it and then we can make change. And so here are some of the common reasons why you might be feeling stuck in life right now. The first one is you may be going through a difficult or challenging time. And what I want to say on this point is that there could have been an event or an experience or something that's happened and that has then overwhelmed you. And then that's had a subconscious effect on other areas of your life and A lot of the time we don't realize that this can even happen until hindsight or after the fact, but there is only so much as humans that we can take, right? We have a capacity for certain emotional uh, events or experiences and sometimes we don't realize the toll that certain events or things are having on us while they're happening and so perhaps that might be going on for some of you and then the next one is you may also be very hesitant to change or resistance to change and I think this one comes up quite a bit especially if you have firstly gone through a lot of change and I'll talk about this a little bit more in a second but when there has been a loss so sometimes there might be the loss of a job a relationship a person someone may pass away or you may be going through like a transitional period of your life and I will do another episode on managing change but I can definitely see this in my life and I'll give you a very quick example so I obviously moved to Sydney a little while ago for work. That was back in 2018. I moved back to Melbourne last year in 2021. But during that time from 2018 to 2021, I moved house, I think four or five times. I think it was five times in total. (laughs) And two of those moves were interstate moves. And so for me now, the thought of moving house is terrifying. Firstly, because I didn't have a very good experience with it. I moved completely by myself and I didn't really have any help. And the thought of like packing up things and like reorganizing it and moving into something literally makes me want to like have an anxiety attack, right? And I know that that is not normal, but I know that that is happening because I have gone through some continuous change in in a certain pattern and that's then made me then hesitant to do that again which I think is a very normal thing, but that can also happen as well when sometimes we're feeling stuck and feeling like we don't want to change things in our life. Like on one hand, we do want to change things, but on the other hand, we don't. And then the next point is you may not be getting fulfillment in your life. And this came up quite a bit as well. And I have many thoughts about this. I have so many thoughts about this. I don't think that we should put so much pressure on someone or something to fulfill us, right? And I think there's this, I don't know what you want to call it, like this take out there that exists that like your job has to fulfill you or your partner has to fulfill you 100% of the time in 100% of the ways. And I just don't think that's like a healthy thing to aim for because I don't think that you should be aiming to get 100% of your fulfillment from everything else in your life, whether that's a job or a partner or a thing or a hobby. I do believe that there does need to be a sense of purpose and there does need to be a sense of fulfillment, but I think it's unreasonable that we expect it from everywhere. And when we get to the practical tips, I will give you guys some guidance around how you can aim to kind of increase that in your own life. And then this one is so interesting because hard relate to it as well, but you may also be keeping yourself stuck in a loop of being stuck because you're self-sabotaging yourself. And I think this is so interesting because a lot of us will tend to stay in relationships. We will tend to stay in jobs that aren't serving us. We'll tend to stay in situations that aren't serving us. Maybe it's even like a living situation or not applying for a job because you talk yourself out of it. You talk yourself out of it and it keeps you stuck. You keep you stuck from moving forward to that next level in life. And again, I'll give you some practical tips on that as well when we get to it later in the show and then there is also an element of perfectionism here too and very similar to the change I think I will do a podcast episode on perfectionism because I am an ex-perfectionist myself what happens here is you stop yourself from doing things because you think it needs to be perfect 
and you think it needs to be 100% perfect 100% of the time and almost like that unrealistic expectation as well. And one example that I can give you guys on that is this podcast right? I had the idea for the podcast back in January. You guys were asking me for this podcast back in January and it took me until July to release an episode. And I sat on it for ages and I kept sitting on it because I couldn't think of a name. That's the excuse I told myself. And I didn't like the artwork that I had made. And then, you know, I I just had all these excuses for myself. And at the crux of it, at the core, I knew it was because I was scared to put myself out there. And I was scared to fail at this and I was scared to be rejected by everyone listening to the episodes. And that kept me from taking that next step. And that kept me from doing what I really wanted to do for nearly six months. And there are many other examples in my life as well, but I'm sure there are plenty in your own life that you can think about where you've wanted to do something and then you've talked yourself out of it because it might be too hard or it might be too scary or it might be, you know, more challenging than what you currently know. But most of the time we can actually do those things. I'm going to say 100% of the time we can do those things. And I will talk a little bit more about tackling rejection, tackling failure in the listener questions too. And then the next reason why you may be feeling stuck is because you are putting others before yourself. And I've spoken about this so many times on this podcast. We know what that does. That causes resentment to them, to us. But what this looks like is when you are putting, I guess, the opinions of others, the judgments of others, the expectations of others before your own. It also maybe looks like doing what society says you should do rather than doing what you want to do. You may even be putting other people on a pedestal before yourself and then that in turn prevents you from doing what you truly want to do. And so that can also keep us stuck in some areas too. And then lastly, I think this is a really important point to make. And I always try to give you guys very balanced advice on this podcast. But when you are feeling stuck and when you are feeling like hopelessness and when you are feeling like there's no light at the end of the tunnel and there's no purpose and when you are feeling like your days are just really dark and when it's prolonged and the good days are few and far between, that is when I suggest getting that extra support and there's some links in the show notes I'm a huge advocate for professional mental health and I think I have to mention that in this episode because obviously I feel like as I said there's a scale And even if I talk about my own scale, there's been scales in my, (laughs) the scales, scales in my life. Let's talk about the scale of stuckness, for example. On one end, when I have felt really stuck and really hopeless, that's when I've had really bad depression or really bad anxiety. And then on that mid tier to like the lower end, I felt stuck in like careers, relationships, certain living situations. And all of those, I could see the light of, out of, at the end of the tunnel, but in probably the worst end of the scale, I struggled to see that light at the end of the tunnel. And so I just think I have a duty of care to mention that. If you are feeling this, please reach out. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to jump into a break and then we'll jump back into the listener questions. But first, a word from today's sponsor. You guys know I love my activewear and I'm very proud to share that one of my favorite activewear brands, Elite 11, is sponsoring another episode of this podcast. This is exciting because they are launching their Black Friday sale on the 17th of November. The Elite 11 Black Friday sale will feature up to 80% off store wide and it is the perfect time to stock up on any pieces that you've had your eye on. Elite 11 offers both women and men's products ranging up to 3XL in sizing across a range of different pieces that cater to everyone. You can find performance ranges, lifestyle pieces and loungewear products to find comfort and style in any activity. And you can also get early access to the sale on the 16th of November by downloading their app and enabling push notifications. That way you'll be notified as soon as the sale goes live early on the app. And you can create a wish list on the app to ensure a smooth and easy checkout when the sale is live. Plus there is no code needed for their Black Friday sale. You can shop Elite 11 now at elite11sporting.com or by downloading their app in your app store. Thank you so much to Elite 11 for making this episode of Your Safe Space possible. All right, guys, let's jump into the listener question. So question number one is where and how to start getting unstuck? This was the most asked question in the question box and rightfully so, of course, I'm going to give you my top tips for getting unstuck. And I would recommend doing this at any moment when you start to feel like you're getting stuck. And what I would also recommend is if you are able to, while you're listening to this podcast episode, grab a journal. You might want to take some notes while I'm going through it. Okay. Now, tip number one, my first tip is always awareness. 
And I always need to say awareness with self-compassion and kindness because we're not doing awareness to beat ourselves up. We're not doing awareness to judge ourselves. Absolutely not. We are treating ourselves like we would treat our best friend. We are treating ourselves with kindness and compassion always. Okay. Now, awareness is always the best place to start because how can you improve something or work on it if you don't know what's going on? You, you need a starting point, right? And on that, I would say acknowledge and embrace it because it is such a normal part of life. And I can give you guys that insight into what I got in the question box, but I can also just see it in my own friendships and even in the family members around me and just even in the people I know around me. At one point or another in life, we have all felt stuck. It is a very normal thing to feel and embracing that when you are in that period or when you are going through that season of feeling stuck, that that is okay. It's so normal. And just knowing that it won't last forever. And And then my tip number two is to dig deeper to understand what is making you feel this way. And I like to really dig and I always do my own digging in my journal. My journal is my safe space. And I do this by asking myself why. And I ask myself, why am I feeling like this? Why am I feeling stuck? And then I write it down. And then what I do is ask myself why again, not once, not twice, but three more times. And the reason for that is usually you can get to a deeper root of the why than just asking the first time. Because a lot of the time the root cause can actually be buried underneath everything else. And knowing the why and working to understand the root of it can then help you make the changes. And I'll give you another example. This one is very interesting. I did have a therapy appointment this week on Tuesday and I had said to my therapist, you know, I'm just feeling a little bit like I'm lacking independence. I'm feeling a little bit stuck and I can't figure out what it is. And we got to it eventually and it's not my living situation. I'm feeling very zen living where I'm living at the moment. I love living at home, love living with my family, but I don't have a car at the moment. (laughs) And not that driving my mum's car. Thank you, mum. I know you listen to these podcast episodes. So thank you for letting me use your car whenever I've needed it. But by not having my own car, we got there and it took her a while to get there with me. She had to keep asking me like, you know, why do you feel like this? What's going on? What has it stopped you from doing? Things like that. We got there in the end, but subconsciously or not even subconsciously, because now I'm aware of it, but me knowing that I just can't like get in the car and take myself on a road trip or take myself on a day out without then having to check that it's okay that I do that is causing me to feel like my independence is being a little bit attacked. And it's not by anything that my parents have done. My mum or my dad have not said anything bad at all, but it's just me knowing that that's how it's making me feel. And it took a little while for us to uncover that. And so my plan is to obviously buy a car. I do need to buy one and I haven't really been looking. I haven't prioritized it, but my goal is to buy one before the end of the year. And obviously we've got a little bit of time there. And so hopefully I'll be able to do that to help me feel better in that element. But it was just a really interesting take for me because I was thinking I'm, I'm feeling good in other areas. Like I don't know what's going on. And then we got to the bottom of it and it was the freaking car. But I am going to also give you some other journal prompts in case the why doesn't work because sometimes you might need a little bit more than just one word. So there are four that I'm going to give you. The first one is what or who is holding me back in life right now? And I can't tell you how many times I've done that and then written myself. <laughs> but again, no judgment. We just write down. We're not judging ourselves. Prop number two is what scares me about doing what I truly want in this situation? So write down your fears write it down. And I love writing it down because it gives you a chance to look at it rationally and to look at it and think, is this really that scary? Or is it my mind or emotions getting the better of me in this situation? So I like the element of writing because it does help you become a little bit more logical and rational. Well, it helps me become logical and rational. And then prompt number three is what change am I looking for or wanting? And then prompt number four is what makes me excited about this change? So just kind of dig around, unpack that a little bit and see how that feels. And then tip number three is if you know the root cause and you can do something to alter this feeling of stuckness, do it. And again, I don't know why you're feeling stuck because obviously we're not talking face to face and I can't 
understand what you're saying back in return. But my advice is to write down a few options and I would say even call it like three options and not, not maybe not options, maybe options isn't the right word, but maybe like tasks or activities. And you want to give these tasks to yourself. Uh, do we call it goal setting? Maybe if you want to call it goal setting, you can, but I'll give you an example. So let's say you are unhappy in your job and you want to change jobs or you want to change something in your job space, but you just don't know where to start. Think about three little things that you can do. These don't have to be big. They don't have to be overwhelming. They don't need to be unrealistic, please no unrealistic expectations here. You might want to have option one as tidying up your CV. You might want to have option two as researching other areas or other fields. Or you might have option three, talking to other areas of the business or other staff in other teams to see if there are any possible jobs available. And you don't have to go out and do all three, but if you go out and just do one thing on that list, that may then start that snowball effect and trickle you on that path to start changing it. And as I said, it can be as small as it needs, but I think this helps you plan out a vision and a pathway forward. And sometimes it might not be as specific as a job. Maybe it can be just looking after yourself a little bit better, or maybe it's even trying something new or changing something up in your routine, but really allowing the space for it. And that's why I love journaling and why I recommend it because that is a great way for you to do that and hold the space for yourself. And then tip number four is to look for ways to give yourself purpose. Now, I did touch on this a little bit earlier. I think society as a whole maybe places a lot of expectation on a job to give you purpose or a partner to give you purpose. But what I want you to do is look at what you enjoy doing in your life. Look at the areas of your life where you are getting any kind of fulfillment at the moment or any kind of joy at the moment and see if you can double down on that. And if I look at purpose in my life, I think I get purpose from a few areas, right? I feel the most purpose looking after myself. And, and making sure that I treat myself right. And what that looks like for everyone is going to be different. But I absolutely feel purpose doing that. I also feel purpose being Franklin's mum. <laughs> and I mean, if you've got kids, you can probably relate to that. You might feel purpose being a mum or a dad. You might feel purpose by caring for something else. And it doesn't have to be a dog or a child. It could even be like a plant. Maybe looking after your plant or your garden gives you purpose. Or I feel purpose when I come on this podcast and talk to you guys. And there are definitely other areas of my life and it can be big or small. There's no right or wrong way to get purpose in your life or to feel purpose. I do think it's a little bit trial and error and almost like having a practice run with yourself to see what feels good. But there are so many different ways that you can find that feeling from different areas of your life. And what I would recommend for a more balanced approach is to be able to get that fulfillment from a few different things rather than just having all of your purpose come from one thing. Because when we put essentially all our eggs in one basket, when we lose certain things, that can then make it really hard and make us feel like we're losing purpose in life. And then tip number five is to look inwards. And this kind of relates to the last point, but you do not always have to be doing more and you do not always have to be doing something. And so my antidote to this is to journal, it is to meditate, it is to do breath work, it is to just aim for that mindful living. And the reason I say this is because yes, you can change all the external things in the world. You can change your job, you can change where you're living, you can change your partner. But if you are not peaceful from the inside, those things will work for a little bit and then they won't work anymore. And I think it took me a long time to learn that. But the most peace I have found has been when I've just been able to sit with myself and to just exist with no unrealistic expectations on myself. I've been able to like flow with change. And don't get me wrong, I'm not always like this, but I try to be like this. And even just being able to vibe with the feeling stuck, like knowing that I'm stuck and just being like, yeah, okay this will pass. Like I'll get through it. Like I have every single other time. And so I just want you to know that if you are maybe feeling stuck for the first time, that it's okay, it will pass and it will make you even stronger the next time that you're feeling stuck and it will help you become resilient through that the next time. And then question number two is I'm feeling stuck because I'm too scared to take risks. Do you have any advice on this? Oh my gosh. Yes. I have so much advice on this because I have many, many thoughts and I think I need to do an episode on, I don't know if we call it decision making or risk taking, but this goes back to that self-sabotage and that limiting belief about ourselves, those limiting beliefs about ourselves. And I did mention that behavior before, but I want to unpack it a tiny bit more because the reason that we do this, and it's actually so beautiful 
And I think, bless, like we're trying to protect ourselves. It's a protection technique because what we are trying to do is protect ourselves from failure. We're trying to protect ourselves from rejection. We're trying to protect ourselves from feeling uncomfortable. And sometimes we're trying to protect ourselves from not being in control. And I think there are definitely areas or times in my life where I can resonate with this a lot. And I think it's definitely taken me time and practice to get comfortable with my own decision-making and my own risk-taking. And I can see it very clearly too. There are certain areas of my life where I'm less likely to take risks or scare or make scary decisions. I definitely have seen areas in my life where I've stayed in relationships longer than I should have. I've stayed in jobs longer than I should have. But then on the other hand, I've packed up my stuff and moved into state without a second thought about it, right? And so I think I can see certain things that trigger when I don't want to make those decisions or I don't want to take that risk. But what I focus on, and this is something that I try and practice every single day now, is that indecision is a decision. When you do not make a decision because you're scared, that is still making a decision and you are still choosing something for yourself, even though you think you're not. And sometimes there is a risk in doing that because those limiting beliefs or that self-sabotaging behavior, the stuff that we tell ourselves in our head is not true and it holds us back. And I think I do often get a lot of questions about how to make the right decision or how to know that you're making the right decision. And I think that we need to let go of thinking that every decision needs to be right. And anything can be right or wrong if we make it right or wrong. But this is also another reason why I like to journal because what I tend to do whenever I've got a decision is write it down. I write down the cost of not making the decision and then I write down the value of making the decision. It's almost like a pros and cons list. But the reason I love doing that is because sometimes my head and my mind runs wild, but when I write it down on paper, I'm able to say, oh, hey, like maybe I am catastrophized this a little bit or maybe I am panicking about something that I shouldn't be panicking about and I even like to think what is worst case scenario what is worst case scenario if I make this decision and it goes terribly what happens then and I think I'll handle it (laughs) and I say this quite a bit and I think I said it a few times to myself when I quit my job I said it to myself when I moved to Sydney as well I just have this mantra, if it goes to shit, I'll figure it out. And it's not that serious at the end of the day. And I mean, I'm not sitting here and saying that life is not serious because I think life is beautiful and I think it is serious and I think we should never take it for granted. But I could make a decision tomorrow or even if we use that example of me quitting my job, if this goes terribly or if this goes to shit, I can easily go back and find another job or find a different job. And I had probably let that fear and let my own self-sabotage stop me from making that decision and sat in that indecision for a little bit longer than what I should have. And you guys would have seen that instead of just stepping into that next point in my life. And I think it is a great privilege to know if you want to do something, right? And so if you've got a gut urge to do something or if you're thinking about doing something and if you want to take the risk, make the call. Do not deny yourself of that. And I think there are so many people out there that may not even know what risks they want to take or what decisions they want to take. But if you know and you've got that urge, you've got it for a reason. So don't be afraid to take it. I really like that question. So thank you guys for submitting that. And then last question, question number three is, I feel stuck because I feel like life is repetitive and boring. And I wanted to put this in there because it did come up quite a bit. And I think it's also really normal, especially if you're doing the exact same thing over and over and over again right? And as I said, the good thing is we can always inject some fun or purpose or change things up if we need. And we can do that at literally any moment or any day. Tomorrow is a good day to start if you want to, and you can do it in the smallest or biggest of ways. Now, I'm going to give you some of the tips that I think you should do if you're finding that you're feeling like repetitive and boring in your day-to-day life. I mentioned in the tips earlier, looking for ways to find purpose. Highly recommend doing that as well. See if there are areas in your life where you can find that purpose or find that fulfillment. And on that, I also want to say what brings you fulfillment, what brings me fulfillment is going to be different. If there is something that brings you fulfillment but does, isn't like textbook or people may not think it brings them fulfillment, who, who cares what other people think? Find what works for you. And I say that because it's like when people ask like, oh, what's your hobbies? And then suddenly your brain goes blank, right? (laughs) And it happens to me too. People will be like, what's your hobbies? And I'm like, oh, what what do I do? And I've got so many hobbies. You know, I love going to the gym. I love walking my dog. I love journaling. I love editing. I love 
recording this podcast, like there are so, even though it is also work, like there are so many ways that you can cross over and have that fulfillment in different areas. I hope that makes sense. I've rammed a little bit there, but I hope that makes sense. (laughs) And then tip number two is you may also be very much sitting in your comfort zone. And I'm a huge believer in good things happen outside of your comfort zone. And just back to the decision-making, sorry, I think calculated decision-making, calculated risk-taking is not a bad thing, right? If you're writing it down and same as putting yourself out of your comfort zone, I'm not telling you to go bungee jumping. I'm telling you, maybe it is to challenge yourself in a different way. Maybe it is applying for that job, even if you don't really want it, but maybe it's just testing yourself to go through the interview process. Maybe you want to learn something new. How many of you listening right now are thinking about all the things that you want to do? and that you've not done before. Those are the things that I'm talking about. They don't have to be crazy, big, scary things, but putting yourself out of your comfort zone, setting different goals in different areas of your life and doing that thing that you always wanted to do. The next tip is you may need to explore some different hobbies or activities, and I would really recommend doing things to nourish your mind. I personally recommend anything in nature or anything creative, For me, at the moment, I'm getting a lot of like joy and I'm going to say fulfillment from the veggie patch. (laughs) And I got a lot of joy and fulfillment from the veggie patch last year when I was going through my depressive patch. And it's just nice to see these little things grow (laughs) and watch life bloom in the form of these plants and watch the vegetables grow. Like it's just beautiful. And that fulfills a part of me that I didn't know needed to be fulfilled, right? And so I recommend exploring different things and I might even put a post up in the group just to say what what are everybody's favorite types of hobbies or activities that we do for fun or for fulfillment and we'll see what comes up and then the next tip is maybe it could be doing more adventurous things alone or in company so changing it up a little bit maybe it's as simple as walking on a different walking path in the mornings sometimes I do that when I want to change it up a little bit or maybe you want to try a different style of workout Or maybe you want to try a different restaurant with your friends. Or maybe you want to take yourself on a solo date. There are so many different adventurous things that you could do alone. And again, I'm not sitting here saying you need to go skydiving. I mean, if you want to do that, do that because I have been skydiving and it's a lot of fun. But I'm talking about what you can do on your day in your day to day to bring you some, I guess, joy, fulfillment or to change up that repetition. And then my last tip is maybe it could be to deepen the relationships that you already have in life. I think if you're feeling bored, what I would really recommend is looking at your circle, looking at your friends and seeing, are these deep connections? Looking at your partner, do you have, can you deepen the connection with your partner? Because I can guarantee when you deepen the connection with the people in your life, whether it's friends, family or your partner, you also start to feel more fulfilled as well. And that is the antidote to that boredom or that repetition as well. And then my last point is that it is okay to vibe. It is okay to have calmness. And I love to have balance now, but there was a time in my life where I loved the chaos and I thrived in the chaos because I thought that the chaos was normal and I thought that the chaos was what it ne- was what I needed in life. And the chaos also felt familiar because I had been thriving in chaos for a long time. And I guess this has been with the help of therapy. I've come to learn that it's actually okay. It's actually okay to feel bored as well. It's okay to not be working towards something. You can just vibe. You can just exist. You can understand that life is seasonal and it doesn't always have to be go 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 or crazy 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 you can just chill as well and I wanted to mention that because I think you know with social media with seeing everything that everyone's doing there's almost like this I don't know what you want to call it the need to always be like working on yourself or challenging yourself or growing yourself so I just want to say with balance yes If you are feeling bored, there are some things you can do. But if you're happy to like vibe with the boredom as well, that's okay. I actually quite enjoy when I'm feeling like peace and bored, if you will. Because I think maybe boredom and peace for me feel the same. I just like when there's nothing. (laughs) Anyway, I am rambling. But I just need to say before we wrap the episode, if you are feeling stuck again or you are feeling hopeless or like things won't ever change and if you felt like this for a long time, that could be a sign that, you know, you might need some extra help. And so please check out the mental health links. Please chat to your GP or your doctor. Please get help and support. You definitely don't have to feel like that. You don't have to feel like that or battle like that on your own. Okay. Now, guys, I think we can wrap the show up there. Thank you so much for joining me. And I do have a couple of little dot points before we get off the episode, but thank you 
for every single one of you who have voted for me in the Australian Podcast Awards. Ah, guys, it means so much to me. I'm so grateful. I see all the tags. I see all the DMs. I see it all. And it's just oh, the comments. I just thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm also not sure when the voting closes. So if you haven't voted, the link is also in the notes. Please chuck a girl a vote if you haven't. Some of you have even messaged me and being like, I voted for you from my work email and from my other email and from this email. And I'm just like, thank you. (laughs) That means a lot. And I did mention this on my YouTube vlog last week, but I'll mention it on the podcast. I don't know if we will win, but even if we were to place or even if we got a lot of votes, maybe that would mean more recognition for us. Maybe that would mean more show sponsors. Maybe that would mean better improvements for the podcast. If I could show you now on the vodcast what I've got my camera leaning on and the way that I do this. Yes, I do pay for the studio, but there's so much I want to do and that might just expose us to that world. So please vote if you haven't. I'm very excited about it. And I also want to say, join us in the Facebook group because guys, the Facebook group is thriving and I think it's my favorite thing now. And I didn't usually use Facebook at all. I am in other podcast groups, Facebook groups. So that's the word group so many times. Anyway, I need to call out one of my favorite posts that I saw this week. I'm not going to say the person's name because obviously I want to protect your privacy. What happens in the group stays in the group, but I do need to talk about this thread because there was a thread in there asking what everyone does from the Your Safe Space community for work. And let me tell you, that was the best thread I've read in a long time. <laughs> Guys, it was so nice to read everything. And again, I guess for me, and maybe it's a selfish thing, but it just opens up that, I guess, dialogue between us. And then I can see, like you guys see a lot of stuff that I do, but then I can now see what you guys do. And so it's so cool because we've got a range of different career paths, different jobs, and we've got some stay-at-home mums in the group. Shout out to you guys. We love the stay-at-home mums. But also there's so many nurses in the group. Also shout out to them. Shout out to everyone. I saw a baker. There was a baker in there and a prison officer. And I was just like, wow, these jobs are so cool. And there was also a florist. And I commented on saying like that would be my dream job because I absolutely love flowers and I love flower arranging. I'm not very good at it, but it was just so nice and comforting just to read what you guys do for, do for work. And I love that we had so many diverse jobs. And thank you if you commented on that. And thank you if you interact in the group. So come join us. The link for that is in the notes as well, or it's in the bio, my bio, or the Your Safe Space pod Instagram. And on that, the giveaway is open. So make sure that you guys enter that. I love doing the giveaway. I'll keep doing them. So make sure that you enter. And if you loved this episode or if you love the show, please leave me a review on Apple or a rating on Spotify or share this podcast with somebody. If you think they might get something out of it, please do. Thank you guys for joining me. And I will say, if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe give me a like and a comment as well. But thank you for joining me. I hope that you have a magical week ahead. I hope that something amazing happens to you. And if you are struggling right now, I just want to say, hang in there. The light will shine again. There is light at the end of the tunnel and you will come out the other side. I'm sending you all my love and I will see you guys next week. All right. Bye. Bye.